job, not a government plan. All I want to do is work with my two hands. Gonna fire We're here at Tell Me on syndicatednews.net with Arun Gupta, G-U-P-T-A. Arun is working with the Occupy Wall Street program, and we have a few questions for him, and I'm sure he's going to help explain their needs, their positions, and their wants. We're going to start out with this. The question that keeps coming up, and it came up with Susan Sarandon as well when she was there, is why is it that the group can't simply go and get the marching permits? Well, then, simply because the NYPD makes it very difficult. One has to understand in New York City, there really isn't constitutional law. There's the NYPD. They uh, essentially decide uh, what uh, the law is in New York City. So uh, this isn't on the subject of permits, but it is a related. Uh, people have, I'm sure, seen the uh, the human amplifier system uh, or that the protesters are using down at Occupy Wall Street. They're in this plaza that they call Liberty Plaza. And one person will get up to speak and they'll say, mic check, and everyone around them will repeat that. And they'll start speaking and everyone around it, them will, will repeat it. Um, so you have hundreds of people repeating the word. It's very slow, but it's an effective way so that someone can talk uh, to the many hundreds of people in these large general assemblies they have. Now, to get amplified sound, you have to apply for a permit. I was told by one of the organizers that though if you want to have amplified sound, and that could just be a simple, something as simple as a microphone and a little amplifier, but there's going to be more than 500 people there the permit for one day costs $4,200, and then there are all sorts of other requirements in terms of equipment, security that you need. So if they were going to do this on a regular basis, they would probably be spending $30,000, $50,000 a week, and that's even if the NYPD decided to grant them. Uh, the permit. There's no real review of uh, the NYPD. Um, so in terms of the marching permits, uh, the NYPD makes it very difficult. They they decide, and you know, sure, you can file lawsuits, but it's a, a slow, cumbersome uh, process, and there uh, tends to be, the courts tend to defer to the, to the NYPD, especially if, if they wave uh, the terrorism flag, that they're doing, they're denying the permits or putting limitations because of security reasons or because of unnamed threats uh, that they can't release for classified reasons. So I don't want to call it a police state. I think that's a bit of hyperbole. Uh, but we do live in a situation where the police do have uh, a lot of structural control over uh, civil liberties. And, uh, and as we've uh, and has been revealed recently, the NYPD is engaged in a massive spying operation against uh, Muslim and Arab Americans in New York City. Uh, they're infiltrating and spying on every aspect of life in churches and schools, collecting huge sweeps of data, uh, clearly unconstitutional, unconstitutional and illegal, but who's going to stop them? We were watching as you, as the groups were marching along, and we did see that they were extremely aggressive. Again, that's, that's typical for the uh, New York Police Department. And the interesting thing is after uh, they they attacked two marches, we, we should remember there was a, a, a march on, I believe it was uh, last Thursday night, September 22nd, it was uh, the day after Troy Davis uh, was executed uh, in the state of Georgia. There was a large uh, gathering and a spontaneous march. Um, there were also arrests and uh, numerous reports of uh, police violence during that march. Um, two days later, there was another unpermitted march. And uh, I, again, uh, that was the one that was attacked. What was interesting about that one was as they were going up from uh, Wall Street uh, to uh, uh, Midtown, 
I, uh, one, a, t a number of organizers told me that they doubled or tripled their numbers. Uh, hundreds of people, in fact, one said about two, he thinks about 2,000 people uh, joined in al along the way. And when they got to Union Square, which is a central, very, uh, another iconic spot in New York City, uh, that's where the police attacked and resulted in the arrest, which were reported to be around uh, 80 to 90, of course. Many of those were caught on videotape. Uh, much of the police violence was caught on uh, videotape uh, as well. We saw it. We saw it. Well, I had other questions that were hinged on why you didn't have permits, but now that I understand uh, why you didn't have permits, it explains uh, everything else that I was questioning about it. Uh, and, and now your message. We noticed that when the cameras are on the speakers, the messages vary by about 20 to 30 different messages. Is there any possibility that they're going to consider solidifying the message so that it's clear and concise? Well, this is this is the the fundamental problem, Harry. Um, we have, uh, and I'm just speaking for myself. We we have a fundamentally uh, broken system. Uh, you have unemployment and underemployment of 25 to 30 million Americans. You have more than 50 million Americans who have no health care whatsoever and many others with very poor health care, this in the richest nation in the world. Um, using realistic uh, definitions of poverty, uh, there's probably over 100 million Americans, over one third of the population in poverty. Meanwhile, the 400 richest Americans, not not families, but individuals own more wealth than uh, the bottom 60% of the population. So 400 people own more wealth combined than uh, over 180 million Americans. And th this is um, a system that is very much breaking, uh, breaking down. So the, the solutions um, to these problems I, in terms of if one were to conceive of realistic solutions and solutions that would address these problems, um, it's they have to be very far-reaching, uh, and you're not just talking about um, weak economic measures. Um, so what what I, I wrote recently is, look, suppose the protesters came in saying, like, uh, we want something like the Buffett rule. Now, if you do the math, according to some estimates, uh, what the Buffett rule would amount to, this is, incre this is the proposal to increase the tax rate on millionaires. Um, it would amount to essentially uh, the fat cats would be giving up a tin of caviar a year. Um, meanwhile, on the other side, we're told that well, you know, we'll we'll tax uh, we'll tax them a little uh, because this is uh, sharing the pain. Um, but meanwhile, we have to give up uh, uh, health, education, uh, food, uh, uh, housing, and and of course, this means people giving up their very lives um, to uh, to to spread the pain out. Um, so it's it's an extremely flawed proposal. And if the protesters came in saying we want the Buffett rule, it's a proposal that would immediately be absorbed by the political system. In other words, um, it would be uh, shunted into the Washington process of legislation and and uh, negotiations and backroom dealing. And so the protesters would be completely marginalized. Now, if they came in and say, well, we want the banks to be nationalized or even the credit system to be nationalized. We want uh, socialized medicine or single-payer health care. They would be accused of uh, being pie in the sky, whereas these are kind, kind of more fundamental, far-reaching measures, in my opinion. And, and so they would be dismissed again, and it would be very difficult to get unity around these from the start. Or if various political factions came in uh, with these demands from the start, you would also find that uh, it would limit the appeal of the protests because people would be saying, well, I don't want to be associated with that political faction. I'm not sure if that's correct. So the demands have to go hand in hand with with the, the creation of the demands have to go hand in hand with the building of the movement. And that's what's going on now. So I think 
it's a correct strategy uh, in terms of what they're per pursuing. And but more fundamentally, one cannot we need a new type of society. We need a new way of relating to each other in the social sphere, in the economic sphere, in, in the political sphere. And that cannot be reduced to a soundbite. Sure, we can use terms, say, like another world is possible um, and that can inspire people, but it doesn't fundamentally get at the type of dramatic changes we need and how we're going to implement these changes. Is there any possibility that you could give me briefly what it is that you want? What it is that I want? Versus I mean, the list, not the whole list of all your wants and needs and, and requests, but if you could just tell me briefly, what does this group plan to change by making by having this march what is what is the purpose well it's it's not a march it's an occupation that's gone on for nearly two weeks it's an occupation that's spreading around the country um and and again i think people want fundamental changes in social relations and, and social relations is includes economic relations it includes our work life and it, it, it includes the economy um, but it's it's not just about putting a small regulatory or policy changes in place uh, we need very fundamental far-reaching changes that's why i'm saying it's it's there this kind of obsession we find in much of the media like, like what are your demands what are, what are, what is can you reduce it to a soundbite it's like look we know this system is bankrupt the mainstream media has utterly failed in terms of providing uh, any sort of analysis um, to say that the economic system has broken down in this country we're not in a recession what's going on is is really it's another depression it's it's going on for four years and so we need deep reaching changes but they have to come from the bottom up uh, where people have the social and political spaces um, where they can get together and say this is what we want this is what we need this is our vision for a new society and this is how we want to go about implementing it again I, I can I can speak to all sorts of specifics we can talk about green jobs we can talk about social socialized medicine we can talk about uh, large industry large industries uh, should be made not for profit. We have to reduce the commodified nature of society. We need to uh, get money out of politics completely. We need to um, have the airwaves be in the public interest again and not being privatized by corporations. Uh, we need alternative energy uh, systems that address climate change. We need food systems that people control. We need educational systems that actually actually nurture our minds, our critical thinking, instead of trying to make us drones for corporate jobs that don't exist. Um, there are a lot of fundamental changes that we need in this society, in fact, throughout most of the world, but you're not going to be able to reduce them to need sound bites. Okay, and my next question uh, relates to the living conditions. Have the police come in and asked you to leave Liberty Park? Um, no, uh, I think this is what's interesting about the occupation is I think the police uh, did not attack it from the beginning. The very first night, they put a lot of psychological uh, pressure on the protesters, but they stood their ground. Um, they brought in uh, ranks of uh, uh, police. They lined them up at the head of the park. They had police around the park. Uh, they uh, bought in uh, dozens of vans with lights flashing. Um, that's what they do when they're going to arrest a lot of people. They told protesters, if you didn't leave by 10 p.m., everyone's going to be arrested. And then, um, according to some... Uh, reporters I talked to, the uh, commissioner, uh, uh, the New York City police commissioner came by, stuck his head out the window of his SUV, talked to a few of the senior brass, uh, they conferred for a few minutes and then he took off and then 90 percent of the police disappeared. Uh, so they do not want 
the image of uh, people who are protesting uh, this uh, system of uh, fundamental inequality, um, the system that says we need to have fundamental inequality, uh, being attacked in the way that you saw uh, protesters being similarly attacked in Egypt, in Tunisia, in Bahrain, Yemen, Libya. Um, they don't want to raise specter of uh, the Arab Spring, especially because so many of these uh, dictatorships uh, that have been toppled or threatened, uh, virtually all of them uh, are U.S. backed in one way or another. Um, so it would it would send a very negative message. So I think that's why the New York City Police Department didn't attack the Liberty Plaza itself. And I think it's why they chose to attack the two unpermitted marches um, on uh, the Thursday and the Saturday, because they were trying to put uh, pressure on the protesters, but they wanted to do it in, in a way that um, wasn't directly tied to the park, where they could say, um, well, they were uh, doing something illegal because they didn't have a permit for the march. And you, in fact, uh, you can see the New York Times reporting is it kind of repeats this propaganda from the police department that, well, the march was attacked because they didn't have a permit, uh, which was absurd, um, because I, th I agree with uh, many protesters who say the only permit we need is the First Amendment. Um, the, why do we have to ask uh, the police for permission to exercise our constitutional rights of free assembly to freedom of speech to um, uh, air our grievances for redress? So. That backfired on the police. So they have uh, since backed off. There was a, a large uh, media upsurge in media coverage after that. So this has created a more social and political space for the protesters. I think the remarkable thing this week is um, the spread of these occupations around the country. At last count, there are now over 50 occupations ongoing or planned all over the United States for the next few weeks. And I was wondering by chance if the groups, the media groups, the media teams had finally gotten or begun to realize that what the police do not want is the video. That's really what they're trying to stop, not the individual videographers. In fact, that's why they grab them when they're using well, the video. Sure, that that's that's nothing new though. I mean, that goes all the way back to Rodney King. Um, ever since that, the uh, police. I mean, the police are no dummies. They they learn, they adapt. It, so for more than twenty years, they've known you do not want um, videographers, people recording what ha happens. They regularly attack uh, media, um, and and of course we see this also, you know, too. A draw a broader example. We see this in war zones where uh, the journalists have become uh, just uh, targets, sadly, of, of so many different forces, including uh, U.S. forces have targeted and killed uh, many journalists in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. And so the police department policy is an extension of that. And from that Saturday march that we're talking about, uh, you can see there's plenty of video of police attacking videographers and photographers for no nothing other than uh, uh, the fact that they are recording what's going on. I see that, and I was I was going to recommend that you make sure that each videographer has someone to hand the equipment off, because it's not the <laughs> individual that they want to stop; it's the video they want to stop. That's why they try to confiscate the equipment along with the videographer. But if if you just avoid it and just hand off the equipment quickly, if the person gets taken in, at least the uh, the videoing can continue. Mm-hmm. Yep. And now it looks like they're living there. Do you guys have uh, toilet facilities like porta potties and things of that nature? I. Uh... No, uh, there there are a number of restaurants and businesses that uh, are allowing protesters to come in and use their facilities. The police have also this is part of the psychological pressure. Um, so the police are will come in and demand that uh, people remove tarps if they're covering equipment or even people trying to sleep. Um, I saw them. Uh, I saw them myself come in and demand that. Uh, kind of a, a 
one of these like uh, outdoor umbrellas, you know, which you can uh, uh, put up. Uh, they demanded that that uh, be taken down um, or they were going to, you know, the implied threat was or they would start arresting people if that wasn't taken down immediately. So and of course, the goal is to increase the pressure. For instance, it's raining uh, right now. And so that's not easy when you've already been camping out in this public space for two weeks. Um, a lot of that, a lot of the people there are sleep deprived uh, because uh, the police are also sometimes uh, at least one day um, I know of perhaps more they've come in and uh, demanded everyone get up at 7 a.m. and yet you have meetings going late into the night and you're sleeping out in an open space so people are sleep deprived uh, there's no toilet uh, facilities of course there's no shower facilities they are getting good food because they're getting a lot of donations for food and so then the police are, are trying to uh, you know they're doing is petty harassment uh, to make the conditions uncomfortable. You know, this is the, it's a cat and mouse game um, because we shouldn't lose sight of the fact what's going on is absolutely remarkable that in the inner sanctum of global capitalism, I mean, this is really the heart, Wall Street. You have a non-commodified space where people can uh, uh, carry out the practice of popular democracy. And it, it's really amazing to see that this is New York City, this is Wall Street, where this has been going on for almost two weeks nonstop. Um, and this is what the police uh, and I think the elite hate more than anything else because it sets a bad example for the rest of the population that we don't need the uh, corporate media, we don't need the political elites, we don't need the economic elites, we don't need this war on terror security intelligence spying apparatus that we can uh, together uh, uh, we can uh, come together and democratically solve our problems. It sets a bad example for the rest of the population, which is why I, I think they attack it and uh, try to create the pressure to shut it down. Yes, today they told me that if a tarp goes over an umbrella, it's considered a structure. Right, right. I mean, these, these are all semantics. I mean, you know, it's a uh, it's uh, the the New York City police are uh, well versed uh, in uh, postmodern linguistic theory. Now, are you all? I see many people with these uh, sleeping bags at night. Are they actually sleeping there at the park in the open? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, they are. And do you have any one assigned a sentry to make sure that they're safe while they're sleeping? It's 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 an open area. I mean, it's it's very people are sleeping in groups. I, it would be, you know, it'd be really hard for someone to do anything. And um, it, it would just be very obvious. And how long do you think you can go on? Well, the original there, there are various calls that went out. Usually, it's uh, credited to adbusters, but there's also the um, uh, anonymous, this kind of you know, um, internet uh, hackers, a uh, 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 privacy rights group um, had also put out a call. There's uh, U.S. Uncut. There's also this group I think called U.S. Days of Rage. They had all been putting out calls. The Adbuster call was to continue until December 1st. Whether they can go that long, it's it's going to just start getting cold, you know, and again, that's going to make it more difficult uh, to continue. That's kind of the advantage the Egyptian protesters had, that, you know, this is occurring. It occurred in uh, January and February, where it's, it's probably some of the most ideal times, because of course, Egypt uh, being uh, in North Africa never gets uh, that cold. And uh, um, but happening during the winter months, it meant it wasn't uh, that hot uh, during the day. But here, of course, by November, it'll start to get uh, freezing in some nights, and uh, that's going to really make it hard, especially to just be continuously in the cold. Excellent. So is there any message you want to give the public, the regular, the rest of the public, not the marchers, but the, the citizens of, of New York or the citizens of the nation? Because I've noticed that the group has is portraying a map now with 
pins showing where activity is taking place. Yeah, that, that's that's I think uh, another group that's uh, um, doing it. I'm not sure. Chicago, it's, uh, Portland, California. Yeah, it's the web the website I believe is occupytogether.org. Yes, yes. Um, I'm not sure what the affiliation with with that. Again, this is all very loosely organized at best. But the message is people need control of their own lives, and we do not have anything uh, uh, approaching democracy. If democracy means that you have decision over uh, the conditions that affect your life, and fundamentally <clears throat> that means economic democracy. You never hear that term talked about in the United States uh, because it goes against uh, the orthodoxy of free market fundamentalism. Um, but if we are to have any sort of real meaningful social and political change, and if we are to have anything even approaching a, a truly democratic society, we need to extend the notion of democracy first to the popular level, and secondly, to all the facets of our lives. Uh, and that is foremost um, economic and social democracy, political democracy, uh, is wrapped up in that, um, but in many ways, it's kind of the least uh, important. Um, the notion of going into a lever, into a voting booth, and flipping a lever every four years—that's um, kind of the consumerist version of democracy. And I've listened to many of the participants who say, "I quit my job. I quit my job." I'm wondering, can they? continue living out in the open in this park eating donated food and and the food's actually pretty good <laughs> um they're, they're getting they're getting healthy food uh, they're getting a lot in 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 uh, uh of money i mean not a huge amount like 500 to a thousand dollars a day in donations uh that it that is then used there's plenty of I've, I've been there there's lots of fruit lots of you know, uh, good food um, that that sustains people. Um, and also, I've talked to a number of people who quit their jobs. But remember, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is is this is very much a youth movement. They're they're quitting dead end minimum wage jobs. Um, this is the best society has to offer them. And in fact, all society can really offer these youth anymore is is uh, dancing with the stars and pepper spray to the face. Uh, there, there isn't much of a future. They're, they're, they don't have any sort of stake in the system. Um, so why should they continue to believe in something that, that is obvious to them is totally bankrupt? Uh, if they've gone to college or their friends have gone to college, they're coming out with tens of thousands of dollars of student debt, few job prospects, and, and no way to uh, pay it off. Um, even if you do get a job, I've spent plenty of time working in corporations. It's, it's not meaningful. It's it's uh, you know we we live in a soul sucking society where uh, the highest thing we're supposed to aspire to is to be consumers. Um, we can do better than that. Where we are just not grist um, for corporations' uh, profits. Um, and that's why this is going on at Wall Street, that so many of the fundamental problems in, in this society can be uh, go back to uh, the rule of capital, the power of corporations have over virtually every aspect of our lives. Um, and I think this is why this has uh, struck such a chord, because even as there's this tremendous suffering being inflicted upon people, corporations keep getting coddled, they keep getting tax breaks, uh, they they keep getting bailouts and we're told we need to give it to them because to create jobs but the more money we give them the less jobs there are no one puts two and two together in the mainstream media uh, to point out that in fact uh, when you had um, the most equity in this society in the 1950s and 60s is precisely when the tax rates were the highest on the rich and corporations that the wealth was being uh, redistributed to a moderate degree. And by uh, now redistributing the wealth up upwards, you're just creating this capitalist version of a feudal system where you have a very small uh, and powerful and extremely wealthy aristocracy on top and essentially masses of serfs below who uh, uh, are told to uh, pray and hope that they're able to toil on one of their uh, co corporate plantations.
Okay, uh, I have one, only one last question. Okay. I noticed that in many of the recordings that they display in the evenings or the afternoons that they show the group Anonymous. The Anonymous mm -hmm. group is known for very um, strong behaviors. Uh, do you really want to affiliate yourselves with a group that has such a reputation? I, I don't. I don't think. Again, this this is a very loosely organized protest, um, so it's not. It's very hard to say that it's being affiliated with them. They put out a call. Um, people are coming down as individuals. A, a part of the the thing to remember about this is the reason this protest is it, it's actually shunning or or it's not seeking out. Um, the endorsement of organizations because institutions have utterly failed. And I'm, I'm talking about even the left here or what's left of the left. There isn't much of the left in the uh, organized left in the United States anymore, but they have failed uh, to create any sort of alternative or to address uh, these fundamental problems. And so in the case of anonymous, it's just like, look, if, if you go down there, nobody's talking about anonymous. Nobody is pledging fealty to anonymous it's th th this is just a, an issue that only exists in the mind of the mainstream media it has nothing to do with what's actually going on on the ground at liberty plaza in, in uh, wall street well i can't thank you enough we've been talking to arun gupta and what is your position in this organization what would we call you one of the leaders one of the spokesmen Neither. There is no organization. Again, this is this is the there's this attempt to keep putting things in boxes. Um, I'm a journalist. Um, I, I publish a newspaper called The Independent. It's uh, a free newspaper that's been around for 11 years, and I'm part of a media collective that is now also publishing another newspaper called The Occupy Wall Street Journal. Uh, we're going to come out with our first issue this weekend, uh, which will be distributed. Uh, uh, we're looking to print 100,000 copies, which will be distributed to the public for free, explaining what the protest is about, how people can get involved, etc. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to speak with us here at syndicatednews.net. We're speaking to Arun Gupta. Thank you, Mr. Gupta. You have been very, very helpful. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thank you, Arum. I really appreciate it. No problem. Take care. I need a job, not a government plan. All I want to do is work with my two hands. Gonna fire up the truck, head up to D.C. Turn on my SOBs, I need a J-O-B. Will I make my living by the sweat of my brow? Give me some work and I will work it. Okay.